Hello, and welcome to the Abiding Together podcast. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. My name is Sister Miriam James Heitland, and every week I'm joined by two of my dearest friends, Michelle Bensinger and Heather Kim. This podcast is born out of our friendship of sharing all kinds of things together, our walk with Christ, our insights, our joys, sorrows, tears, and laughter, and you are most welcome on the journey with us. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast. And we are in part three of our uh, book with Father Jacques Philippe in the School of the Holy Spirit. And ladies, as I was pondering this morning about our time together today, I was thinking for a time such as this, isn't it? Because we're going to talk about how do we know that an inspiration comes from God? And so we've been chatting for over an hour (laughs) already before we recorded this. And I think we're all in agreement um, about this and what the Lord is doing on the face of the earth. So Michelle, how's it going for y'all over there in Florida? Um, I think the natural state of the weather is kind of the natural state of the world right now. We are in tropical storm Cristobal, and so it's windy and rainy, and things are topsy-turvy. Like, I'm looking at patio furniture that's upside down, Mm. and um, this kind of feels indicative of the world right now. You know, things are a little (laughs) crazy and topsy-turvy, and I mean, do we need the Holy Spirit now more than ever? Uh, Amen. Amen. So, Mm. yeah, that's where we're at, but hey, we have power. Power, so we're all good. Um, so Heather, how are you? Yeah, it's rainy here today too. I'm wearing like my favorite hoodie. I'm like, I just want to be cozy and hunker down uh, today. But yeah, it does feel tumultuous out there. It's hard. It's hard in the world right now. And um, to be honest, I feel like the enemy is just having a heyday with a lot of different things. And so I'm so glad mm-hmm. to have our friendship conversations with people, being Mm -hmm. able to pray and, you know, really try to be rooted in this book and things like this are just good, like anchoring points, like, okay, let's get back into the truth of who God is and how we listen to his voice. Um, because there's a lot of voices and a lot of disunity and all of that going on. So, yeah, so I'm glad to be journeying together and, um, yeah, yeah. How about you, sister? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way. I was going for a walk this morning as the sun rose and the moon was setting as the sun was mm-hmm. rising, you know, and uh, just thinking about today and what we were going to talk about and about the two of you and about the world and just really asking the Holy Spirit to to come really with deeply within our hearts and just praying for our friendship and just, you know, asking the Lord to to illumine us, right, to illumine us so we can follow him and not swerve, you know, as the office of readings right now are from the book of Joshua, where the Lord says, don't swerve to the left or to the right, but mm-hmm. made ruin faithful to the commandment you've been giving. And so just like, Lord, please, you know, please illumine the ways of my heart so I can follow you. I don't, I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to be swayed. I don't want to follow you. So I think it's really great that Father Jacques Philippe in this chapter, like every other, like we've said, could be underlined. Every sentence could be underlined. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, uh, you know, when we talk about being in the school of the Holy Spirit and our summer school program here, which is an absolutely wonderful summer school program, uh, he's going to talk today about what, how can we know that an inspiration comes from God? And I don't know about the two of you, but people ask me all the time at, at a conference or after a talk, like, how do I know it's God talking to me? How do I, like, how do I know? Like, how do I know it's not just me telling myself what I want to hear or how do I know it's not the enemy? So maybe what we could do ladies, just if we just want to, maybe each of us could just offer something really brief before we dive in. Like Heather, how do you know? And if father Jacques is going to unfold this for us, but how do you know personally? I mean, you know, and we're always in a process of discernment, but how do you, what are some telltale signs in your life that it's the Lord speaking to you? Yeah, I think it's a problem, a problem. I don't know. It's a struggle for all of us. It's like, which voice is which? Is it my voice? Is it my desire? Is it someone else? Is it perceived like what I should do? Or is it really the Lord? And yeah, usually I take time. I I sit with it. I take time and I, and I perceive like what is coming from this in my heart. Is it peace? Is it disruption? Does it have like a biting voice to it? Or is it coming with calm and steadiness? That's one of the things. And sometimes if I'm about to make a decision and I've been sitting with it for a while and I'm not getting clear direction, I'm just like, Lord, like I really search my heart. Like what are my intentions behind what I'm Mm -hmm. doing? And if, if I can honestly say after rooting, sifting through what's going on, is it selfishness? Is it this? And I just go, Lord, like, 
my heart is yours. And if you want to close this door, close it like you make the way. And I'm just going to go mm-hmm. ahead with what I think is the mm-hmm. best, what I think is your will. And if it's not, you have every you have every right to disrupt it and close the door. And so that's just a couple of things. I mean, obviously, it's a big topic. But yeah, how about you, Michelle? How do you know it's the Lord? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I think how I know it's the Lord, I think this area I've probably grown in the most in the last two years because I think it's the voice of the bridegroom. I think it is when I get quiet and I get um, in those solitude places and I get in my prayer space, you know, like uh, like we like to call it like the secret garden space and just where I can hear the Lord speak and um, where his voice sounds very clear. And I've started to hear it like where I can recognize it, you know, um, like I said, it's not like an audible voice. It's like a sense, a feeling that you get. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think part of it for me is when I will, um, I often dialogue with the Lord and say, Hey, is this really you? Can you confirm it? You know, and like the promptings of the Holy spirit, like it will lead me to a certain scripture. Mm Scripture is a big one Mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. where will he will confirm it in his word, you know? And, um, my husband is very, uh, logical. And so I will run a lot by him. Hey, do you think this is, you know, like, or is this just me, you know? And so it's having those voices, other voices to speak in to confirm that no. And a lot of times it's just waiting, and waiting, oftentimes, like there's a translation about waiting in Hebrew that means wait also means not where you just don't do anything. It also means to intertwine, you know. And so where I intertwine, the Lord and I intertwine together and that he often refines what I'm hearing. Like I got the gist mm-hmm. of it, but there's some intricate details that I missed are not what I perceive to be as truth. So I just have to wait and allow the, him to refine, you know, what he's telling me in the inspiration. Mm. But I also feel like it's a spiritual muscle. Like when you use it oh, yeah. and you act on it, mm-hmm. like, and Father Jacques Philippe says this, like, <laughs> I mean, any people that know me well, I'll get an inspiration, then I'll act and then I'll do it again and I'll do it again. Like, mm-hmm. because I've started to trust that this is the voice of the Lord. This is truth. Let me act on it, you know, because I think mm-hmm. also with the waiting, sometimes we can make waiting a permanent position yes. and not. Yes. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. So what about you, sister? Yeah, I think, you know, I, it's, it is a process of learning and, you know, it's you're doing, you know, you're, you're cultivating spiritual tools. And I, for me, you know, I've always go back to a tree is known by its fruit, you know. So I'm looking within, like, what is what is the tone of voice being used? What's being said? You know, where is it leading me? What is some of the fruit being born? You know, what is the outcome of that fruit? And, um, you know, whether it's a word for myself, I, I know, also notice when things converge, the people, when people don't, who don't know each other all say the same thing to me at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> like, hmm. You know, like, what is the Lord trying to say something? But I think also whether it's a word for me or it's a word or something for somebody else, just to, like you both are saying, humbly surrender it. Because I know myself when it comes out of compulsion or it comes out of fear, that's usually a telltale sign. Either it's not from the Lord or something needs to be refined mm-hmm. in it before it can be accepted or given. Um, and then just to always submit that in, in humility and just say, Hey, you know, it just, I want to offer this to you. Uh, you know, I, if this resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, you know, discard it, pray about it and see, and just to see, yeah, from there. So, and I think, you know, like Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And so it's a process, you know, and we're always learning to hear his voice and it's a continual transformation. And I love that we have spiritual masters like Father Jacques Philippe who are going to tell us, they're going to give us some really solid guidelines that we can p- apply today in our life. Today, we can apply to the inspirations that we will all get today as to you know where they might be coming from and what to do about them. So I love it. He says um, on, in section three, he says, how can we know that an inspiration comes from God? And so he says that, you know, this is the one, now we come to the most delicate question. Mm-hmm. And he says, obviously there are no ready-made answers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so great, you know, but he's, he's going to give us, you know, some, uh, some hallmarks here. And, and the first pair or in the first kind of point he makes that to, to progressively acquire a spiritual sense. So he says it's a spiritual hearing is a kind of ability to recognize among them, among the multiple discordant voices that we can hear inside us, the unique, unmistakable voice of Jesus. Mm-hmm. This sense is like a loving instinct that makes it easier and easier for us to distinguish the voice of the spouse in the chorus of sounds that greet our ears. So the Holy Spirit for each of us uses a tone of voice that is his alone. Mm-hmm. And that's so great, a tone of voice. Like, can't we all relate to that? And so sometimes it's like, well, I don't even know what the Lord, I don't know what the Lord says. So I think often, you know, it's so easy. The Lord is so kind. Often it's a simple prayer of Lord, help me hear your voice. Mm-hmm. Just help me. 
Like, I don't know what it sounds like, or I don't know it well enough yet, or I don't know if it's you. Help me hear your voice. Help me acquire the spiritual sense. So you go for it, ladies. What do you think about this one or the, or the next one, some of the criteria? What do y'all think? Yeah, I think, first of all, it's wonderful that he's saying there's not ready-made answers, but there are answers. Mm-hmm. There are answers. You know, it's, God mm-hmm. isn't trying to be elusive and play games with us. Like, hey, it's hide and seek. Just try to find me. You know, and it feels like we're we're constantly on the run and we don't know where he's at. You know, so I, I love that he's saying there are answers to be found. And that's a place of hope. I think for many people who are feeling right now, I never know what God wants. God never mm-hmm. speaks to me. He speaks to other people, but he doesn't speak to me. He is speaking to all of us and cares uniquely about each person's life and the details of and situations of their life. And he wants to speak there. I think that's a place, a starting mm-hmm. point to open up our hearts again to that specific truth. Um, and I love that unmistakable voice of Jesus. Like it takes time. It just takes time to understand his voice. And it is something that we can understand. So I just want to encourage people about the, like resist the temptation for things to be immediate. Well, if I haven't figured it out or I'm not hearing it right now in this moment, then I'm not going to hear it ever. You know, just slow down Mm -hmm. your pace, slow down your pace. Where is the pace of the Lord? And, and that's usually where we're going to hear his voice. I just wanted to start with that. Go ahead, Michelle. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the pace is the big deal. Like you have to um, slow down and there, it also requires solitude. And it also, he goes on later in this chapter to talk about it, but it also requires turning down the other voices that you hear. Like, is his voice the loudest? So you have to turn up the volume to that. And usually it means turning down the volume to other things, Mm -hmm. you know, distractions, all of that kind of stuff. Because he speaks to us, like we had talked about earlier, like a lot of times I found like the Lord speaks to us in a whisper, you know, and even the scripture that we use, his, um, my sheep know my voice, you know, but we often see like God is the good shepherd where he has that sheep on his shoulders. And so when he's speaking to him, like his voice, like they're very close and proper proximity, you know, Mm -hmm. and so we have to get close to the Lord to hear what he's saying. I mean, and he can speak in a shout and he can speak in bold ways too, but more than often he speaks in solitude and he is a guest. Mm -hmm. And so he's also waiting to be invited in to speak. You know, he will not impose. Mm -hmm. He is a very gentle Mm -hmm. guest, you know, he will pursue, Mm -hmm. but he won't impose on us. Sister, what about you? Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say quickly, I think that's important what you said about turn down the other voices, because often when we're seeking God's will, sometimes we can ask too many people what they think, and we're just getting opinions Mm. rather than the truth and the voice of God. And so I think it's important, like you said, sister, to have trustworthy people, like a spiritual director or people that we're close Mm -hmm. to, or Michelle, like your husband, you know, people that you can trust to speak in, but not so many voices where we're basically looking for a a weird sign, like, well, if the light flickers, then I'm going to, you know, do this like that. (laughs) That's not how we need to proceed. It's a relationship with a lover. Go ahead, sister. And amen. And amen to that. And I love that he gives some, when in section two, he gives some criteria that help us confirm an inspiration. And so he talks about how God doesn't contradict himself. Um, inspirations are consistent with the Holy Spirit, teaches the church uh, with the demands of our vocation. He gives some some extraordinary examples there. But um, and that a tree is known uh, by its fruit, and I I will never forget when I was uh, taking some classes in Rome, Italy, many many years ago, and one of the priests was a Dominican priest talking about prayer, and he said this woman came up to him one time, and and she's like, you know, I think the Lord is speaking to me, and 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 Father said, you know, what what is the Lord saying? She's like, well, He's revealing to me that I'm the fourth person of the Trinity, <laughs> and <laughs> so Father's like. Yeah, uh, well, probably not. Yeah. Probably like we can, you know, let's kind of look at that and let's just see, you know, because, but like sometimes, you know, we think, you know, it's, it's like this full of emotion, like, oh, it must be the Lord. Mm. But he's like, so let's just, let's just take a step back and let's kind of see what, what's being said here. Like, is that consistent with how the Lord reveals himself? Is it because God is not inconsistent? Mm. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I take great mm-hmm. comfort in that, that the Lord is not inconsistent, yeah. you know? And that he can, um, yeah, that he is there, that his voice is the same. He is gentle. He is present. Like, you know, so I think that's such a great, just such a great comfort in this, in the reality of the Lord always speaking to us. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think it's very, very true. These, these little things that he's mentioning here aren't little. I mean, he, they look little because he's just Mm -hmm. putting it in like a couple paragraphs, but that's his Jedi gift that he can take, I mean, big, big topics and and make it very simple, but they're almost like a filter. You know, if you take like what Mm -hmm. you're trying to discern 
Or is this a voice of God? And you can put it through this filter. Does God contradict? Is this contradicting, you know, the truth? Like, is it true? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Is it beautiful? It might be a hard word. Like God does admonish us. Like that's okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Is it consistent with scripture and the teachings of the church? Like these are big ones. And honestly, it would help us greatly if we put it through this filter. It would help us greatly. I think we would get so far in our discernment Mm -hmm. if we just put it through uh, the things that he mentions here. So... Michelle, what are your thoughts? And I loved what he said. Does it bring constancy and humility? You know, because yeah. sometimes the Lord asks us of things. Like I know from my personal experience, he asks me things that are going to push me out of my comfort zone, you know, mm-hmm. because, and that's where the humility comes in where I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen, you know, mm-hmm. but I trust in you where, um, when he asked me that it brings a humility because I know that it, it can't be done in my own power. It has to be done in his power. And therefore, mm-hmm. like, I really was just praying about this the other day. I don't want people to say, man, like, can she do it all? Like, I want people to say, man, can the Lord really work through her, even her, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> where he gets the glory? Like, you know, I think we're old enough. Um, well, I'm speaking for myself, you know, whatever. You are the anyway, oldest. I mean, so go ahead. I am the oldest. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> thank you for that. Heather. And so do you see this wrinkle right here? Like, look, and so anyway, um, yeah, yeah, seriously. Um, no, yours is right here, Heather. You gave me this wrinkle. And so, um, but I was thinking to myself, like, I want it to be just about him and I'm not doing that just to get flip service or just to be like, Oh, isn't she holy? No, like I've learned lesson. It really needs to be about him Mm -hmm. because if it's about me, Mm -hmm. it will like, it will exhaust oh, so me. Much it will pressure. cost, yeah. you know, oh yes, mm-hmm. the striving and the pride and all that kind of stuff where I'm low. And then, you know, I think it was Potter P that says, if you're low, nothing can touch you. You know, if you're just mm-hmm. humble and you identify your weakness and like we were, just, we've said before on the podcast, like I will boast in my poverty, like, okay. And I don't feel like it is um, demeaning me. I feel like it is promoting him and his glory, you know, and just realizing that. And, um, and there is nothing more exciting than co-creating with the Holy Spirit in my mind. Like so it is just, yeah. I think it's such an honor and such a blessing that he, the master of the universe that created the whole world wants to co-create and inspire us. Mm-hmm. Like it is a blessing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Yeah. And that's so true. And I think, um, when we do, aren't we all grateful for the time we all have moments where we've all followed the inspirations of the Holy spirit. And aren't we so glad mm-hmm. we did? Yes. Oh my gosh. And you know, he talks about that in the discernment of spirits. He says the, the experience of the church and the saints demonstrates a general law. What comes from the spirit of God brings with it joy, peace, tranquility of spirit, gentleness, simplicity, and light. On the other hand, what comes from the spirit of evil brings sadness, trouble, agitation, worry, confusion, and darkness. And those are some of the telltale signs. And he'll talk about the nuances. But I, I remember uh, some time ago, and uh, I was busy doing something, and the Holy Spirit was clearly saying to me, "Go to this person and ask them how they're doing." And I'm like, "I'm busy right now. I don't want to. Like, I don't want to do that." It was, you know, and I didn't want to have that conversation. And it just, and I, I wrestled with the Holy Spirit. I was like, "I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm like really busy, and I don't want to have, you know." Finally, thank God the Holy Spirit won out. And I'm so glad I did. Like, I am so glad I did. And so like, what a, like, what a see, and you could hear the the agitation from me was my resistance to the Holy Spirit. Cause I did not want to have to do, you know, and I'm like, oh geez, you know? So it's like those being very attentive. That's why Michelle, both of you are saying we must be people of the interior life. We must be about the secret garden within us. We have to be so attentive to that no matter what we're doing, because that's going to give us the impetus to love well, to love our spouses well, to love our children well, to love the nation well, like whatever that is. But we have to have that interior life that is not exempt for anybody. And that's the continual wellspring of love. That's the wellspring of refreshment and joy and, and discipleship is within, within us. Mm-hmm. So do you guys have, what are your, some of your experiences when we talk about the, the father Jacques Philippe talks about the nuances of the discernment of spirits and, and the difference between, you know, like agitation and kind of all those things, you know, um, Heather for you, do you have some experiences about that as well? Yeah. I, I think just what I mentioned earlier about like the voice of the enemy is biting and that's something that, that, just Mm -hmm. those, um, or that, that word is like, oh, that (laughs) that feels so true. Like when I think about certain situations, I'm like, oh, that's totally the enemy. It, he bites, you know, and the voice of God, even if it's admonishment or something hard, it's a voice of love, you know? So there is, 
there is classic rules of the discernment of spirits, which we can learn. And my husband and I are actually going through the book by um, Father Timothy Gallagher together to just like relearn like certain principles. It's like, you got to go back to it, go back to the basics again and again and again, because, Mm -hmm. because this, we stand on the shoulders of giants. We don't have to figure all of this out alone. And there are certain Mm -hmm. saints and spiritual Mm -hmm. giants that we can look to who have already learned. And they're trying to teach us in simple forms. This is how you can understand, you know, your voice, emotion, the voice of the enemy, the voice of God. So I think for me, when I feel the biting, I'm like, oh, there he is again. And I was just talking with my spiritual director the other day about uh, this experience I'm having with, like, I have this reoccurring lie that keeps coming in and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, then I go to the Lord and I'm like, Lord, what do you have to say to me about this? Like, I just keep struggling with this. It feels really true, you know? And then I feel the Lord just gently speak to my heart, something peaceful. I'm like, okay. And then I go back out and then the biting comes harder from the enemy. And I'm like, what's that about? Like, why is he doing that? You know? And my spiritual director said like, this is the work of the Lord of building the spiritual muscles. He's putting more weight on the rack for you. And he said, he oh, said like, it may not one. feel good, but this is the loving hand of God because he wants to set you free from the lie. So he's going to give you more weight to mm-hmm. handle. And I was like, Oh, so that's where like a spiritual director can come in really handy to figure out like, is this the enemy that's doing this? Like I, I'm starting to lose a sense. I'm getting disoriented. What is the voice of God? And mm-hmm. what is the voice? Of, what if I'm supposed to just give up everything? <laughs> you know, he's like, well, let's look mm-hmm. at this. So I don't know, Michelle, how about you for discernment of spirits? Yeah, I agree. And that was a great word um, from your spiritual director. It's weight to handle because it's very similar. I think in this season, the Lord has really been showing me how to fight, like fight in the word. And an image I got when I was in prayer, because the Lord often speaks to me, like I am visual. I'm sure y'all can totally really understand that listeners mm-hmm. just the way I am, but I'm visual, but I saw, you know, like the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And when I was praying one day, he was like, basically you and a couple of other people, he's like, y'all have left your sword and your shield at your feet. Mm-hmm. Like you're not wielding your sword or holding Mm -hmm. up your shield. Like it tells us in Ephesians. And I realized like, I don't like, how do you fight? Like, how do you, like the Lord was trying to teach me how to use the word of God. Like, and we've talked about it and we do it at times like, Oh, I'll bring it out. I'll bring it out scripture. But he doesn't want us at times. He wants to give us like a fighting regiment. He wants to show us, he wants our consistency. Like he wants us to declare scripture. He wants me to be like, but like I was thinking about it and where we live, we have a lot of Navy, um, flight students. And so it's a big military town. So we were talking about something. And one of the guys said a couple of weeks ago, he said, generals aren't made, you know, in peacetime, they're made in war. Mm. And that just, that one sentence, just like, because it was something that the Lord was teaching me. He's like, so you actually learn, have to learn how to fight when you're actually fighting, Michelle, like when you're in war and we mm-hmm. are at war, you know, mm-hmm. like the times that we are in is very much a war, but I'm not going to keep my focus on the enemy. I'm going to keep my mm-hmm. uh, focus on what the father is doing and his voice. Mm-hmm. And that's going up higher mm-hmm. and listening to his voice and learning how to put my shield up and wield my sword and have confidence that you know, that I am more than a conqueror, you know, and that he will fight for me. And that it even says in Psalm 144, that he will arm me and show me how to fight. Mm -hmm. When I was even praying with this, this is the confirmation of the Lord. I mean, it was like, as like, for some reason, Psalm 144 was even open and it says, I will show you how to fight. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you're serious about this, huh? You know, (laughs) pay attention, little one. (laughs) Those kind of things. Pay attention, little one. I call it discernment for dummies where he just like highlights it like in bold signs. Don't miss this. What I'm trying to tell you, Mm -hmm. discernment for dummies. Mm -hmm. What about you, sister? No, that's true. And I, I, I like that, um, you know, he, he, cause he talks about that. Then he talks about is God's will always the choice that is most difficult. And I think we have, sometimes as Catholics, we have that common misperception yes. that God just wants me to suffer. So if I don't want to do it, that's necessarily what God wants me to do. And that is not true. I think we really have to challenge that mm-hmm. narrative in our hearts of who God is. And, um, he, he loves us and he speaks to us through our desires. That's why he's always trying to heal our deepest desires. Cause our deepest desires lead to him. 
they lead directly to the Lord. And I, I love what Father Justin, he was on our podcast. I can't remember which episode he was saying this, but, you know, he said, he talks about how, you know, say, for example, you're in the car with your kids and you'd lose it on one of your mm-hmm. kids. And, you know, the, the enemy comes right in there to say, look at your awful mm-hmm. mother, look at you. And, and, and he's like, where, where the, where the Lord, the spirit, the Holy Spirit will come and say, Hey, you know what? That probably wasn't the best way to handle mm-hmm. that, you know? And, you know, to, to tend to our hearts there, to, to bring us to close there. Or, you know, if, if you're a mom and you've got five littles at home and you have a call for prayer, a heart for prayer, and, um, you know, the, you, you know, your desire would be to go say, go to church and have an hour of adoration, but maybe you can't do that. You know, so the enemy comes in to say one thing about mm-hmm. you. And then the Lord's saying, why don't you just try, just like stop right here where you are. Mm-hmm. And so I think we really have to challenge, you know, yeah, many times like the Lord is, the Holy Spirit is convicting us very deeply to make a very difficult choice. But I think we also have to understand that the Lord speak us, speaks to us through desires. And I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had people, you know, talk about discerning a vocation and, you know, talking about how, you know, I, I, I want to get married or I want this, but I think, you know, the Lord might want me just to offer myself in suffering and do that. I'm like, oh, no, 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 let's just stop right there. Like, let's just, you know, what what is the Lord mm-hmm. saying and, and what is your heart open to in all these different places? And, and you know, to give the gift of yourself in communion is the call of a human person, right? It's just a matter of how you're going to do that. Mm-hmm. So so I think we also have to really uh, to open our hearts to what the Lord mm-hmm. is doing, you know, and um, and to see kind of who he is because his desire is for us to become fully alive, you know, and to be fully one with him. And so he uses a variety of means to help bring us to life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and Father Jacques says, even if it's hard, it's going to end with joy and peace. Like that's where mm-hmm. it leads, yes. right? So we've all gone through hard things that we... we we felt like the Lord was inviting us into, but it, it leads to freedom. You know, it leads to peace. It leads to joy. Mm-hmm. Like it leads to all of these fruits that are coming from God himself. And God is good. He's good. He's good. So I think that that's where we can, we find um, as we grow in those areas, I know for me, I'm willing to embrace the hard more regularly now without as much hesitation. I still mm-hmm. hesitate, but not as much as before because I realize, no, this is good. It's going to end with good no matter what it is. And I love mm-hmm. what he says too about mm-hmm. the humility of the spirit of obedience. I think this is really mm-hmm. important. Like there's a lot of division that comes um, because people find a fault. They don't want to be obedient to what people in the church are saying, especially bishops, the Pope, like whatever it might be that these disruptions are happening. I'm seeing this a lot, a lot. There's division everywhere, but but I think just having a spirit of humility and obedience, and we see this in the saints, that even when there were things going on that were right in the church, they were still obedient, and they they prayed and were obedient to God, and they were obedient to the magisterium. So I think that's one thing that, mm-hmm. that we do have to you know, note in our minds that God wouldn't ask us to be disobedient to him and to, to mm-hmm. the shepherds. I mean, obviously mortal sin is not a thing, but, you know, we don't want to do that. Does that make sense? Do you guys have something to say about mm-hmm. that part? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think obedience is a big one. And I think um, the, I think the Lord put obedience in the way for, it's a guardrail to keep us on the right track. And it's yeah. not something to lord over mm-hmm. us. It is something actually to secure us and keep us safe, you know, keep us under protection, mm-hmm. you know, in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. And um, like, I mean, a lot of unpopular things, you know, like even the whole idea of be, you know, wives, be submissive to your husband, you know, and a friend of mine's like, you don't really believe that, do you, Michelle? Like you're a strong woman. And I, you know, submission, like if you take the word means under mission together. Like, I mean, we are mutually mutually submit, like Chris and I mutually submit to one another. But I know that under him, there's a protection that he has my back. If I, you know, submit my, you know, whatever I feel like to the Lord, Chris doesn't Lord it over me. You know, he discerns with me because we are, and that may be not a lot of women's experience with their spouse or their husband. And that's a hard place to be, you know, that's a very hard place to be. But I know for the sake that I'm in, like that is a safe place And it's a place that I trust and I have God's protection in this. And I think, Mm -hmm. and just to highlight another area, like when you have an inspiration from the Holy Spirit, like the whole obedience thing, it doesn't go against the vocation that you're in. Mm -hmm. It flows out of the vocation you are in, you know, it flows out of your vocation, you know, and I know that's very hard because like for a lot of us, you know, we have a home and children and we have these dreams and all this. The Lord knows how many children we have. Mm The Lord knows our state in life. He knows our vocation. He knows sisters are religious serious sister, but he also knows our desires and he purifies them. He placed them there. They're always being purified and refined. But what he calls us to 
is like, it flows out of the vocation. It's not against our vocation, you know? And I think that's Mm -hmm. a telltale sign, you know? And, um, it's hard to discern sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, because we face a lot of resistance and that is where we go back to wise counsel. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Ignatius rules of discernment, like father Gallagher are Jim, you know, you go back to discernment, you go back, but it's also taking that holy pause and not just react but you pause, you wait, you listen, you respond, mm-hmm. you know, I think one other uh, big thing is like, if there's a sense of haste or urgency, that is not like, sometimes Lord calls you to move quickly, but a lot of times he doesn't move in haste. He's very planned, you know, out, mm-hmm. you know, he mm-hmm. knows what's going on, you know? And so like to move like, Oh my gosh, I need to do this now. I need to make a decision. I need, you know, a lot of times where it's that mad rush, you know, mm-hmm. as a time like, okay, Lord, where are you in this? Like, where is that holy pause? Mm-hmm. And to there? trust, Sister, oh, sorry, you... I was just going to say, and to, and to trust, like God knows where you are. You know, that yes. I, I remember, yeah. Michelle, I just want to say this part, like you and I having children and being in ministry at the same time, having a call on our life to, to speak and do conferences and retreats. And that involves traveling sometimes can at times feel opposed to our vocation, but you know, it should be flowing out of our vocation. So there's so many times that we've had to discern, is this a season that that the Lord is inviting me to pursue that work or not? Am I supposed to just stay home and be present to my children? Or should I say no to this particular trip? Because I have something going on within my family and God wouldn't be asking me to, to sacrifice the needs of my family to do this mission. So I think there's there's things in there where you and I both have had to discern over and over and over again, is this the right time, you know, to do that? Would the Lord be asking me to um, do something potentially opposed to my vocation right now? And at the same time, you hold that intention. It's the both end with, I don't want to be dismissive of the Lord's call. I don't want to exactly. to diminish the call. I don't want to undermine it and just like go, well, this is just easier to just not do anything. So I think it's holding it in the tension of both. But I think our conversations have been very fruitful in that time like of checking with one another. Well, what's your, what's going on in there? Like, what are your, what's in your desire there? Is it good? Is it bad? You know, what's going on? So anyway, sister, what are your thoughts? No, it's true. And I just, um, you know, the, the word Obadira means to hear, to listen, Mm. you know? And so it's like in my life, where am I, where am I willing to listen? And are there parts of my heart where I'm not willing to listen? Because usually the places where I'm not willing to listen are the places where I tend toward disobedience, so to speak, because I'm just not, I don't want to hear, like, I don't want to hear that. And so, um, you know, and he talks about being unresponsive to grace and, and all of us have parts of our hearts where we're just not responsive to grace, you know, and just, and then the, just the compassion of the Lord's there where he says, you know, he gets, he picks us up after we fall. And, you know, like just as many times as, as we've all had moments where we follow the Holy Spirit, we could all tell you stories. I know myself where I didn't follow the Holy Spirit and, and having been convicted by the Holy Spirit later and learning the lesson, you know, like, okay, what happened there? You know, like, oh, okay, that was me either afraid to say something or that was me, you know, that was my own out of acting out of a personal wound versus, you know, and, and then it's okay to sit with the Lord and say, okay, Lord, what happened there? Cause he loves to teach us. Oh gosh, he loves us, you know? And I think, you know, as we kind of come to the conclusion here and he talks about, you know, turning our hearts to our lady, I was thinking this morning, you know, about grace. And we talk about, you know, hail highly favored one, you who are full of grace. And we all know a very simple definition of grace is the very life of God. And we talk about the formation of our intellect and our will to perceive what is good and to do the good. But my dear friends, it's not enough just to be able to perceive. We must be filled with grace so we can Mm. actually do that. All of us, we know what's right and what's wrong. And so often, even though we know what's wrong, we do it anyway. And we need the grace. Like the world right now, dear friends, needs, we need the grace to choose the love of God. Mm -hmm. And I was praying this morning for us, for our friendship, for this podcast, for our listeners, for the world, like, Lord, fill us with grace. Mm -hmm. Fill us with your life so that we can see you and hear your voice and choose you. We, We can't do it on our own. And so the Lord so tenderly loves, you know, he grafts us into his vine and, you know, he... He loves us. He loves to fill mm-hmm. us with grace. And so, um, yeah, but I just, I would say like my final exhortation here would just be ask for the grace, like Lord, fill us mm-hmm. with grace, fill us with your life so that we can choose what is good. We can choose you. Right. And we, so, and I know Heather's going to lead us in a closing prayer here, but what dear sisters, like, what is your last kind of, as we kind of close this school, the Holy spirit, maybe Michelle, do you have any parting words for us or just some, just some things for our listeners? Yeah, I think with the school of the Holy Spirit, I think the whole idea of 
open yourself to respond to grace, you know, clear the way so you can receive what the Holy Spirit has for you. Mm -hmm. You know, he is gentle and he is loving and he is this delicate guest that takes care of your heart, but he also animates your life, you know, and if you're having questions like, okay, Lord, is this all there is? You know, is there more to life than this? Mm -hmm. And that's the whisper Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit saying, oh, I have so much more for you, dear one. Mm. You know, I have so much more. Let me animate and illuminate. And a love affair with the Spirit is the wildest romantic adventure that you could have. Yeah. So, Heather. Yeah, I would also say just open wide the door to the Holy Spirit and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what he might do. Don't be afraid of what he might invite you into. Like, this is the adventure place. And all of it leads to good and to love and to just, uh, you know, I think if you've, had a relationship with God, things are going sideways or you're feeling low, like we've said many times, it's okay to begin again, you know, and to just invite the spirit there and say, my heart is cold or I feel like disconnected from you. I want to begin again. And God is so willing, so ready to meet us right there. How about you, sister? Yes. And I I think this is such a great you know, to stay in the school of the Holy Spirit for the summer is a great place to stay. So I wonder if we could just all make a commitment, listeners and us alike, just to stay for the next three months, June, July, and August, let's just stay in the school of the Holy Spirit. And let's just see what happens. And we can even divide the summer into phases. Like, you know, June is phase one, um, July is phase two, August is phase three. And just to see our growth, like, and just to always come back to that, you know, it's like, Holy Spirit, I just want to spend the summer with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I bet at August 30th, like at the end of August, we could just gather around and tell some stories, couldn't we? Of how just this summer school has been immensely fruitful. So that I think, I don't know if there's a better place to spend the summer, um, other than the beach in Pensacola, which I, I perceive Michelle is going to say that, or yeah, the Pacific Northwest. Both Thank you. But, uh... <laughs> okay, but August 30th is my birthday, so that is what you can oh. all give me. Yay! Just tell me how you've spent the time in the school of the Holy Spirit, you know? And so, yes. like, I can get hundreds and hundreds of gifts. Like, let's do that. Okay. Oh, you're so yeah. great. I so love it. Heather, you want to close us out before our one thing with that beautiful prayer from the Cardinal that's at the end of the book? It's so yeah, lovely. Yeah, I would love to. For those of you who have the book, it's in Appendix 1, but you can Google this, just uh, a prayer by Cardinal Mercier. So it says, I'm going to show you, this is just before the prayer, it says, I'm going to show you a secret about holiness and happiness. For five minutes every day, let your imagination be quiet. Close your eyes to everything they see and shut your ears to all the world's noise so that you can withdraw into the sanctuary of your baptized soul the temple of the Holy Spirit, and speak to the Holy Spirit and say to him, Holy Spirit, soul of my soul, I adore thee. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen, and comfort me. Tell me what I ought to do and order me to do it. I promise to submit to anything that you requirest of me and to accept everything that thou allowest to happen to me. Just show me what thy will is. And then he goes on to say, If you do this, your life will be quiet and peaceful, and comfort will abound even in the middle of troubles, for grace will be given to match any stress together with strength to bear it, grace that will take you to the gates of paradise full of merit. Such submission to the Holy Spirit is the secret of holiness. So friends, I just want to encourage you to pray that prayer. Like if you're wondering and you go, I don't know what to pray. I mean, that's a simple thing to just write out, print out, and to pray every day. This is a prayer that I've prayed for many, many mm. years. And my mom taught me when I was little. And um, and it's a powerful one. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, uh, with that, uh, shall we talk about our one thing? Heather, would you like to kick us off uh, with our one thing for the sure. week? Sure. Um, our archdiocese in Vancouver, um, they have been partnering with Glass Canvas, which is a media company. They might <laughs> shoot me for how I describe them. They're wonderful, and they do amazing work. And they've collaborated on a new website called Behold. And I'm so proud of the work that they've done. It's a beautiful website, and it's not just informational, but it has tons of tools that they're curating Um, great stuff for people to see and partake of. And so I just want to encourage you, whether you're a part of our archdiocese or not, it's a great platform to find inspiring videos and commentaries and writings and all kinds of stuff. Uh, So you can check it out. The website is Behold, and we will put it, if you just Google Vancouver Archdiocese Behold, it'll come up. Sister right now. 
<laughs> you all could see our screen as this little stuffed donut with eyeballs that she's peeking up above her screen to stare at us right now. <laughs> I'm trying to laugh the whole time. I'm like, what's the website? I'm distracted. <laughs> Anyways, what is your one thing, anyway. uh, Michelle? I can just say the, the website is beholdvancouver.org. Okay, Michelle, what's your one thing? My one thing is uh, Father's Day is coming up, and we have a special Father's Day episode that will um, air the day after Father's Day. But I wanted to put a list of really good men's podcasts, and some of them are not just strictly for men, but a really good gr uh, list of podcasts um, to listen to from different men. One's Heather's husband and Dr. Bob Sheets have one, and there's a couple others, but a couple of people have messaged me, said, do you know any good men's podcasts? So I'm making you a list of some really good men and women's, but predominantly men's mm. podcasts. Mm. So I will put that on our show notes. Sister. Awesome, yeah. Um, well, speaking of school, I would love to recommend it's something that you can also take for your study this summer, a brand new series, a, new, a biblical study on the book of Hebrews um, by Dr. Andy Swafford and mm. Jeff Cabins. And it is really, really wonderful. I, the, what they've done is they've taken, you know, scripture scholarship with tradition and blended it with personal experience and just a really a beautiful accessibility to Hebrews. If you've either, if you've never really studied it or if you've studied it many times, I think it's going to really bless you. So we're going to put the pre-order link that's actually going on pre-order when this airs, I think June 15th. And yeah, but, but the study of scripture by uh, Dr. Andrew Swafford and Jeff Cave is just really wonderful. So it comes from Ascension Press. I think you're really going to love it. Okay. So. And next season, we have to have Dr. Andrew Swafford on the show because I've been so impressed by his teaching. Like, wow. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so like, wow, what a great biblical teacher. And so I Definitely. love that. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, all the students at Benedictine are so blessed. Like that, he's just a wonderful gift to the church. So yeah, maybe we will. We'll have him on. That'd be delightful. So, anyway, friends, happy happy school of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go, and we look forward to just journeying with you. We might also put um, there's a lot more content in this book at the end, so we might put some of that stuff on our for our patron Patreon subscribers. So if you want to jump on and even support us over the summer, you'll have access to more some more content from the school of the Holy Spirit and some other stuff as well. And so yes, we wish you every good thing. And until next week, we will be abiding together. God bless you. If our podcast has blessed you, would you please consider financially supporting Abiding Together via Patreon? Patreon is a website where people can make donations to help keep the podcast going. And now that we at Abiding Together have an independent platform, we have a number of costs that go into creating the podcast and the high quality content we offer, such as our website, design, tech support, staff, and other elements. Having an independent platform also allows us to explore and create new content for all of our listeners to enjoy. So thank you so much to all of you who are already donors. When you donate through our page on Patreon, you are able to donate any amount, $1 a month, $5 a month, $500 a month, or just a one-time offering. Abiding Together is a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization and donations are tax deductible. So would you please prayerfully consider giving to Abiding Together? If you donate $15 or more per month, you become a tribe member and you will receive a short individual video from Michelle, Heather and I each month about a variety of topics. You can see all of the information on our Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash abiding together podcast. So consider becoming a supporting member today and help us further the work of the Holy Spirit moving in and through this community. Together, we can do amazing things. We are so grateful for your support and may God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend? Could you also leave us a rating and a review on iTunes? That helps us get the message out to as many people as possible. All the show notes are in your podcast app, but if you'd like them emailed to you, you can go to our website at abidingtogetherpodcast.com and subscribe. On our website, you will also find all of our past episodes and information about various episodes. You can also join our private Facebook group and get in on the discussion and all the beautiful things that are happening there. We are so glad that you are on the journey with us. And until next week, we'll be abiding together. God bless you.